Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Wednesday, April 19th, 2017 edition of VR News. Hump day, Wednesday. We're getting closer to the weekend. Hopefully, you guys are having a kick ass week so far. Lots of Facebook F8 news today, and that's to be expected. We're not going to start there, though. We're going to start with GPU news, specifically AMD, which increased their Polaris line with a 500 series of cards, the 570 and the 580. So I looked at a bunch of sites. I thought extremetech.com did a really good job of comparing the cards, not only against the previous 400 AMD series of Polaris RX cards, but the 580 against the 1060. So we're going to look at and talk about both of those. So benchmark wise, the RX 580 beat the 1060 in a few games. Overall though, the 1060 beat the 480 and more and on average is about 7% faster. So the second thing you would look at then is price to kind of get your bang for the buck, cost per megahertz, etc. or per frame per second, however you want to look at that and then make a decision based on that. Well, right now, NVIDIA slashed their prices right on AMD's launch day to match. So they're both $269 US. If you don't care about the brands, you just want the best bang for the buck, even if it's 7%, you go with the NVIDIA 1060. If like me, you've got a machine that you specifically want to keep AMD. For example, my entry-level gaming rig has an R9 290. For me, it's a no-brainer. I will get the RX 580 and put it into that system. If, because I tend to get for my main system, whichever brand is faster. And then I make an entry level system for the opposing brand and put a card in, right? So for me, uh, yeah, I would probably get a 580. If you've got one machine, bang for the buck counts, you get the 1060. Well, what about the previous 400 series? How does it compare? against that. So the 580 is 3% faster than the RX 480 and the 570 7% faster than the RX 470. The same spread that the 1060 has over the 580. So again you can see not a huge incentive to upgrade if you've got one of those cards already. If you've got a 470 and a 480 I wouldn't upgrade at this point. If you're like me and you've got an R9 390 or an R9 290, specifically the 290, absolutely go right for the 580. If you're a brand loyalist or you've got a scenario like mine, you want a second system that is represented by AMD, there you go. So interesting. The real question is, is AMD going to drop their prices? Because then you can do that calculation all over again. And if the deal is better than the 7% performance difference between the two, go with the RX 580. All right, next news piece. HTC releases tutorials for the Vive Tracker. Uh, and it's also got information for doing mixed reality with that tracker, which I found interesting because I had once upon a time ordered a Vive wand. There was a mix up, ended up canceling the order because of the trackers being on the horizon, uh, having a feeling that they may also be able to do mixed reality. That turns out to be the case, which is awesome and a cheaper way to go. So I'm definitely going to go that route uh, once I'm in a position to do that. So for the documentation and things, HTC teamed up with a company called 2-Bit Circus to release documentation for a game called Pinata Party. And that showcases specifically how the tracker can be used for location-based VR because at the end of the, you know, whacking stick, they put the tracker. And obviously it's going to be some kind of VR Pinata is what I imagine. And also, they added the option to film in mixed reality using the tracker connected to a camera. So very, very cool for my situation for the Quick Look series. That is a cool way to go about it and probably what I'm going to end up doing. Next news story and the first of the F8 ones for today, Facebook and Otoy's volumetric camera system and an alliance between the two is going to deliver six degrees of freedom at some point this year. 
So they're working with these partners. In addition, Adobe, Framestore, and Foundry are involved to build a new kind of camera, tools, and workflows that are all capable of volumetric capture. And that's that type of capture. And we talked about this a few weeks ago when we looked at that moon landing picture where you can kind of move your head a little bit. And because of the volumetric, it's not just a static 360 it's going to dynamically adjust and scale properly. So you're going to get proper proportions within the amount of space that you can move your head, which is just going to add to realism. Look, if you've got terminals set up in a museum, for example, that's a better way to look at stuff because you can kind of pivot a little bit and move. So that's cool. The cameras that they are working on. So they've got a basically a soccer ball sized one uh, and it, that was kind of the prototype, an evolution of last year's Surround 360, which parts-wise was about $30,000 US, not cheap. So they've got two versions now. They've got the X24 and the X6. Now the number represents the amount of cameras that they have on the sphere. Size-wise, 10 inches for the X24, roughly five inches in diameter for the X6. There's also some technical specs that you can try out, but quick kind of rundown. The X24 is able to capture full RGB and depth at every pixel for all of the camera, and it oversamples at 4x at every point. The X6 is at 3x for every point, so slightly less. No pricing has been made available yet. Uh, as soon as I hear about some pricing, I will mention it here, mention it here but very cool. Uh, these things look awesome. It's kind of like a Gear 360, but bigger with way more cameras on it, again, for that volumetric capture. Next F8 news story, uh, Facebook wants to build direct brain interfaces for VR, and it kind of blows me away. We talked about this almost jokingly on the show last summer. And sure enough, somewhere out there, and probably should have guessed it at the time, there's a team that's working on exactly that. Controlling, not with a controller in your hand, but VR via your brain. And it all got a little technical for Facebook CTO Mike Schrupfer uh, in his introduction. So he introduced Regina Dugan, who is part of Facebook's mysterious research and development team that operates in what is known as building Eight. So according to her, they have a team that's about just a little more than 60 individuals, engineers, scientists, physicists, and leaders in neural prosthetics. So these guys um, are definitely pretty talented. Their combined goal is to create a system capable of typing 100 words per minute straight from your brain. Think about that, the ultimate dicta machine, but how cool that would be to actually use in a game or experience. So the first step for them is to create the technology that according to Dugan, acknowledges that humans are both mind and body, and they feel that that's theoretically going to lead to new, more semantic forms of direct device interaction. Put into layman's terms, able to move more things with your brain, very cool. And she also theorizes that speech is a form of compression. And, you know, their goal is ultimately to create systems that bypass any need for simplification and allow you, via your brain, to just express yourself naturally, like you would if you weren't talking and you were thinking yourself through a conversation. She's admitted they're still a few years away. She proposes using a series of highly advanced optical imaging sensors. They would need to be capable of seeing through hair, skin, and our skulls, capturing hundreds of readings every second. She admits it doesn't currently exist. They're developing for something that they hope the technology will be in place for some point in the near future. But as of yet, not there yet. Still kind of cool. How do you guys feel about that brain control? To me, anything that can read through your skull, I need to be convinced. And I'm not talking on the level of being paranoid to hold a cell phone to my ear because of some worry there. But genuine, have we tested this for long enough with whatever technology we, you know, have peering through our skull? I'm sure that's going to be the case. 
and will probably contribute to a very long and researched rollout. Next story, Facebook announces 360 degree capture SDK so that we can record and share our VR experiences using cube mapping. And that rolled out today, the SDK, it's available on GitHub. I'll have the link for that down below. According to Facebook, the SDK is basically bypassing the traditional stitching uh, method for 360, which was very complicated and involved processor on a processor level, threading, etc. And they're going to basically capture 360 in real time and resolutions as high as 4K. So to put it simply, it's going to be a lot more streamlined in terms of processing the image that you capture than current 360 degree cameras are with the software that they use because of, again, that stitching method. So faster, better, not too bad. Now, it got a little technical there at parts. It gets even more technical. I tried to really kind of... Uh, Go down on the technology, but uh, yeah, if you want an interesting read, if you're comfortable with the technology, hell, even if you're not, but you want to read it, check it out at the link below. There's three categories, accessibility, quality, and speed that break it down even further. That's it for the news today, guys. Hopefully, like I said, you guys are having a good week. We will get back to you Thursday. I do believe tonight is when I launch the one year in VR video. Guys, as always, cheers.